for many hours, no one in the world knew what had happened to me or where I was. Only the police could call a solicitor for me. I had to ask like four or five different guards for several hours until I finally received a call. Some of my solicitor's calls did not get through or were not answered. One of the calls, my solicitor was told, would be monitored, and, and so they simply refused to take it. I asked to speak to the solicitor afterwards when, when, when that happened, but I was not allowed to. In total, I spent almost 24 hours in detention. At no point whatsoever was I allowed to speak to a family member or a friend. Imagine... Because you have a right to a phone call, at least from what we were told here in the United States. And what if they can just take that away from you as well? To call an attorney to represent you. You have that right. And yet, that's taken away. Think about what client states like the UK can do to people like Richard Methurst. Think about what the empire here can do to us. Uh, there was a, a recent arrest made a friend to the channel, Richard Methurst. I would like to go over that really quick, just to share that with you guys. Um, and give my thoughts. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is scary. Um, I think this needs to be talked about. I think this needs to be discussed. Um, while I have you guys here, um, technically this is a bonus story, but I think, uh, you know, when it comes to press freedom, we have to fight for that as much as possible. And as you can see with people like Julian Assange, uh, press freedom is really on, you know, a hair trigger. Uh, these Western countries do not like press freedom because it really interferes with the bottom line of the corporate parasites and their latest victim, you know, after Scott Ritter, you know, with the FBI raiding his home. And now it is Richard Medhurst that recently also just got arrested uh, in London. So let's go here really quick and let's hear what he had to say. Ah, oh, jeez. My name is Richard Thomas Medhurst. I'm an internationally accredited journalist from the United Kingdom. On Thursday, as I landed in London Heathrow Airport, I was immediately escorted off the plane by six police officers who were waiting for me at the entrance of the aircraft. They arrested me, not detained, they arrested me under Section 12 of the Terrorism Act of 2000 and accused me of allegedly, quote, expressing an opinion or belief that is supportive of a prescribed organization, unquote, but wouldn't explain what this meant. One officer took my bags and when I asked why he was still back in the aircraft, I was told, look, mate, you can get nicked right here in front of everyone or in there, your choice. So I was taken to an adjacent room, patted down, my phone confiscated. I was not allowed to inform my family. Despite being calm and cooperative, I was handcuffed with something that placed my shoulders in an awkward position and, and my wrists on top of rather than next to each other. The handcuffs were extremely tight. Despite the police loosening them, they left marks on me for two days. The police took me down onto the runway, put me in a police van, essentially a mobile cage, and informed me that everything was being recorded. The van was cramped. I had to struggle the entire time to keep my balance. Uh, and trying not to fall over as we drove to the police station. Now, once inside the station, they searched me again for the second time within 10 minutes. I was told to sit on a bench, remove my shoes, remove my socks. I was told to turn my socks inside out and hold them up for the officers to inspect. They also made me hold up my feet so they could check them as well. The officers took me to, an, to a room with UV lights, which they told me is used to catch burglars who are sprayed with something as I have no idea why they did this since they just removed me off of a plane. My suitcase was then opened in the lobby and ransacked. All of my journalistic equipment and devices were seized, including phones, SIM cards, wireless microphones, microphones, headphones, even my shoelaces. They later took my DNA as well, my fingerprints, palm prints, and photographed me. I was placed in solitary confinement 
in a cold cell that smelt like urine. There was barely any light, and the bed, if you can even call it a bed, was simply a, a small concrete ledge with a paper-thin mattress. The cell had no windows, no heating, no toilet paper. I was recorded 24-7 with audio and video, even when going to the toilet. I had to eat food with a piece of cardboard that you were supposed to fold in two in order to scoop up the meal. The police said that I have the right to inform someone that I'm locked up. So I said, okay, I want to call my family. And then they'd go, well, your calls are withheld because of the nature of the alleged offense. I tried to ask, well, what's the point of a right if you can just randomly withdraw it? Why tell me that I have this right at all? And one of them said something along the lines of, well, it's not an absolute right. It can be waived. So one of the things that needs to be honed in on is the fact that somebody who is a mass shooter would get more freedom than what Richard Medhurst got. Rapists get more freedom than what Richard Mehers got. And all he did was report the news. When people call for censorship, this happens to people who you agree with and people who you don't agree with. And this is one of the reasons why that I am against censorship. And look at what they did to people like Richard Medhurst. This is crazy. Not only are they doing this against people like Scott Ritter, they're doing this against people like Richard Medhurst. And so all for speaking out against the empire and speaking in favor of people who are disenfranchised, for speaking out in favor of people who are being exterminated. This is not only something alarming for watching something like that happen to somebody like Richard Medhurst. This is alarming for me because I'm also in this space, also talking about these same things. This is alarming. I'm worried for people like Nick and Rome and Savvy. I'm worried for Danny Hyphon. I'm worried for the people at Any News Network. Right? I'm worried for uh, people like Zabi Benjamin, who I just had on recently. I'm worried for all the people who are in independent media who are literally speaking out. I'm worried for, you know, uh, people who I'm friends with who write articles. And so if they can do that to him, they can do that to us. This is why it is so important that we fight this system. Because if independent media can't exist, what voice do we have? What truths can we uncover? How can we be an informed citizen if we do not have the means to inform ourselves? Let's continue. Well, it's not an absolute right. It can be waived. Similarly, they said I had the right to know why I was being detained. So I asked again, and the police would say something like, well, we're just the arresting officers. We don't really know. Or this will be explained to you during the interview or some other generic response. Now, despite the police officer's civility and cheerfulness, I felt that the whole process was designed to humiliate, intimidate, and dehumanize me and treat me like a criminal, even though they, they must have been aware of my background and that I'm a journalist. I was under surveillance almost the entire time from the moment I was arrested until I was released, be it in the police van, in the station, the cell, all of it. No privacy whatsoever. Many of my requests were also delayed or outright ignored. Uh, when I was detained, I asked for water several times. The police would always say, sure, but then I ended up waiting hours for a tiny cup of water. I asked if I could have my own clothes because I was in a t-shirt. It was cold and I couldn't sleep. They said they'd give me a pullover, but never did. Although one guard did give me a second blanket. So you have to nag and nag for the most basic things. And this is why I was uh, afraid that they weren't even going to call a solicitor for me. I was able to see the nurse on one occasion, but on three other occasions when I asked to see the nurse, they'd say yes and then nothing. For many hours, no one in the world 
knew what had happened to me or where I was. Only the police could call a solicitor for me. I had to ask like four or five different guards for several hours until I finally received a call. Some of my solicitor's calls did not get through or were not answered. One of the calls, my solicitor was told, would be monitored, and, and so they simply refused to take it. I asked to speak to the solicitor afterwards when, when, when that happened, but I was not allowed to. In total, I spent almost 24 hours in detention. At no point whatsoever was I allowed to speak to a family member or a friend. Imagine... Because you have a right to a phone call, at least from what we were told here in the United States. And what if they can just take that away from you as well? To call an attorney to represent you. You have that right. And yet, that's taken away. Think about what client states like the UK can do to people like Richard Methurst. Think about what the empire here can do to us. Think about people like Mumia Abu Jamal for the simple act of being a journalist, for a simple act of talking about the crimes of the empire, he's still in prison. Think about how our carceral system treats us. Think about how the carceral system in the UK treats people who are in their system. Think about how they treated Julian Assange. After waiting 15 hours, I was finally interviewed by two detectives. The interview lasted about an hour, an hour and a half, maybe something like that. So there's clearly no need to hold me there this entire time. But I believe this was done on purpose to try and rattle me psychologically. That failed. I categorically and utterly reject all the accusations by the police. I am not a terrorist. I have no criminal record. Prior to this incident, I'd never been detained in my entire life. I'm a product of the diplomatic community, and I'm raised to be anti-war. Both of my parents won Nobel Peace Prizes for their work as United Nations peacekeepers. They had a tremendous effect on my worldview and outlook and instilled in me the importance of diplomacy, international law, and peace. I myself am a victim of terrorism. When I attended the British school in Islamabad, the Egyptian embassy adjacent to my school was blown up in a double bombing. I categorically and unequivocally condemn terrorism. I am a Medhurst. My family goes back 1,000 years in this country. I come from a long line of public servants. My father served in the London Metropolitan Police before entering the United Nations. He is an expert and an authority on counterterrorism who taught me much. My grandfather was in the Royal Air Force during World War II and his father before him in the British Army in World War I. I perhaps don't have the same career paths as them, but I consider my journalism to be a public service and my way of doing my bit for the country by providing a counterweight to mainstream media. I love my country. I respect its laws and its legal institutions. I get the feeling nevertheless that those like myself who are speaking up and reporting on the situation in Palestine are being targeted. I had booked my ticket to London on the same day and yet an entire team of police were mobilized to arrest and question me. This is why I felt that this was a pre-planned coordinated arrest. They watch, all of us, they watch us. Because if they do not like what you're saying against the empire, they want to rattle you. They want to let you know, hey, we see you, we know exactly what you're doing. And if you don't shut up, then it's curtains for you. And they do that in the West. Because who owns our government? Many people have been detained in Britain because of their connection to journalism. Sometimes under the Terrorism Act, sometimes not. I think of Julian Assange, Craig Murray, Kit Clarenberg, David Miranda, Vanessa Bealey. As far as I'm aware, 
I'm the only journalist, however, to have been arrested and held for up to 24 hours under Section 12 of the Terrorism Act. Keep in mind the conditions that I outlined previously. The psychological element where you're made to wait endlessly. You've not been told what you're accused of, nor when you'll be questioned. Now, despite having been released unconditionally, I do not feel that my bail is truly unconditional. I'm effectively in limbo, not knowing if I will be charged in three months or if I will go to prison. Journalism is my livelihood. I have an ethical and a moral responsibility toward the general public to inform. But I feel that a muzzle has been placed on me. I simply do not know if or how I can work at all during the next months. Palestine, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, remain the most pressing news story in the world. However, it seems that any statement, no matter how innocent, how factual and well-intentioned, can be skewed and twisted into an offense of the highest order. This is precisely the danger and the absurdity of the terrorism act that I have always sought to impress upon the public long before I ever became a victim of it myself. It is out of control. It has no place in a democracy. Counterterrorism laws should be used to fight actual terrorism, not journalism. We cannot call ourselves a democracy as long as reporters are dragged off of planes and detained and treated like murderers. I am disgusted that I am being politically persecuted in my own country. Now, as I do not know if I can still report as a journalist for the next months, I kindly ask you for your support during these times. Freedom of the press, freedom of speech really are under attack. The state is cracking down and escalating to try and stop people from speaking out against our government's complicity in genocide. Please stand not just with me, but with the others who are still inside. I know what they're going through. And the best relief is to know that people on the outside are rooting for you and doing everything they can to get you out. Thank you. Shout out to Richard Midhurst. Um, that was horrible for him to go through. And this is why it's so important for us to stand with independent media. Because if there's nobody to be independent of the empire, independent of corporations to tell you the truth, then the truth is lost. So if you guys haven't subscribed to Richard Mayhurst's channel, go ahead and subscribe there. Show him some love. Um, and you know, constantly, you know, let people know about the truth tellers so that, you know, people can discover and find out what's really going on. Because uh, until we truly change the system from the ground up, those of us in independent media have a lot of work to do. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.